The following presentation is a production of Ride the Wave Media. Welcome to Let Yourself Bloom, the podcast where motherhood and ambition coexist beautifully. I'm your host, Jen Banks, and in each episode, we'll dive deep into the journey of being more than a mom. Here, we believe that you can love your children deeply and still have room to nurture your own dreams. Picture this, a life where you don't have to choose between career and family, where you can be inspired by stories of women who have boldly stepped into their dual roles. Together, we'll explore how to balance, grow, and thrive in every season of life. Our guests will share their personal stories of finding identity beyond motherhood, proving that you can hold both your family and your ambitions in your heart. We'll talk about the seasons of life, embracing our unique paths, and giving ourselves permission to bloom whenever we're ready. Whether you're a working mom of two or dreaming of a bigger family, whether you're a stay-at-home mom seeking more or a career-driven woman balancing the chaos, this podcast is for you. Listen in and let the stories, advice, and community support you in becoming the fullest version of yourself. Tune in, be inspired, and remember, you are worthy of the same love and care you give to others. Welcome to Let Yourself Bloom. Let's grow together. Welcome back to the Let Yourself Bloom podcast, the podcast where we explore self-discovery, transformation, and growth. But before we do that, you're probably wondering, are you in the right podcast studio? Behind me, I have a sign that says, The Best Birth Podcast. This is the studio where my friend Sarah Zarol and I have recorded the Best Birth Podcast miniseries. In each episode, we interview experts on all things birth, pregnancy, and postpartum. All of those occupations that are also adjacent to pregnancy and postpartum, including a pediatric dentist, a chiropractor, pelvic floor therapist, and so many more. Our goal was to interview 40 experts to make 40 weeks of pregnancy, but we ended up with 52 episodes to make one whole year of pregnancy. You can listen to this podcast wherever you get podcasts. Please share with your family and friends about this resource for new parents or parents who are seeking more child education or birth education. I know I was one who truly benefited from this podcast, and I am so grateful that I was able to be firsthand learning all of these things along the phenomenal experts. I was here recording a bonus episode with Jody Moore of Better Than Happy, and I will also share that on this podcast, Let Yourself Bloom. Back into the Let Yourself Bloom podcast, I am launching a new series today where I will dive deep into each chapter of my book. You're probably thinking, I've read your book, Jen. This is all very redundant or mm, turning off now. I invite you to reconsider because there may be something that you hear that you've heard before. And there's the perfect reason why you're hearing it again at this moment. Ask yourself, what am I learning that I didn't know before? What do I need to know now? In high school, I was conditioned to not repeat myself. I had a few friends who, every time I began a story, they said, Jen, you've told us this before. This caused embarrassment in me and shame for bringing up something that I've already told. In my life now, I often begin a sentence with, I'm sorry if I told this before, or stop me if you've heard this. Sorry if I'm repeating myself. I feel the need to justify any time I bring something up that I may have shared with them before. I don't remember who I tell what, at which times, and I become very self-conscious of that. My new goal is to just stop saying that phrase before I say something, and if I repeat myself, again, there's something they need to learn, or there's something that I need to brought back to my remembrance. I invite you to do that as I go through each chapter of my book. Today, I'm starting with the prologue. This was initially my first chapter of the book, but then as I continued writing, I realized that it was a prologue. It was establishing who I was, where I was in life, my stage, my perspective, and how I was bringing that to the table. 
in each of the chapters that follow the prologue, I go into the how-to, the steps for how you to implement each part into your life. The book is more like a journal entry where you can note the things that stick out to you, the changes you want to make, the goals that you have in your heart. But for my prologue, it talks about how I wasn't enchanted with motherhood. I was conditioned as I was growing up to be a mother. Dolls were placed in my arms. People around me were mothers. It was prevalent in my church to be a mother, and then that was your highest calling. As I set my sights on motherhood, it felt far in the distance. I babysat. I nurtured my sisters. There were a lot of things that I did to prepare to become a mother. However, once I reached that goal, there wasn't really anything beyond that propelling me to grow more. I was prepared to ride into the sunset and live life fulfilled as a mother. Except I wasn't. Motherhood was not fulfilling. I thought I was going to love every moment and be so enraptured by my children. I love my children. I do. I'm so grateful for them and the ways that it has challenged me and caused me to learn skills that I wouldn't have otherwise. But it isn't the only thing that fills me up. And I heard a mom on a podcast say, I love my children, but I don't love motherhood. (gasps) There was the permission, the validation, the allowing myself to not love motherhood. And for that to be okay. In a society where I felt like the only thing I was supposed to be was a mother, I now did not fit that mold. I began pursuing personal development. I began having therapy sessions, talking with other mothers, trying to figure out what was quote unquote wrong with me because I didn't love motherhood. Steps like the phrase from that podcast host that I didn't have to love motherhood kind of helped crumble my mold or this stereotype that I thought I had to fit into. This was an awakening. It was uh, an identity journey that I didn't expect to go on. Sure, I had formed who I was in my adolescence and through college, but now I was redefining who I was within motherhood. And I talk about in my book that it doesn't just have to be motherhood. It could be any singular role. If you are consumed with just one role, you're numb. You're going through the motions. You're being one kind of person that can almost feel robotic. But if you explore all the dimensions of yourself, that is your identity. It's uncovering or unlayering who you are at your core. It's taking off those stereotypes and conditioning and rewriting your story. I had a friend read the book who is not a mother, and she said that she felt called out and that it was appropriate for her situation and what was going on in her life. We are meant to be more than a mother. And again, wherever you are in your life, whichever perspective you're coming at it from, that is okay. And that is great. I share the prologue only in an effort to show you where I was coming from, the social the social conditioning that I experienced. I have another friend who was conditioned to be a career woman, and she threw her life and self into that career. She feels like she stepped away from that, and it was a bold choice to become a mother. So either end that you're on can become an extreme. We're trying to find the balance in motherhood, the self-acceptance and assurance that we're doing what's right for us. We know who we are. And our identity supersedes our circumstances. Whatever's going on, whoever we're around, we can be ourselves. Sometimes we've lost ourselves in motherhood, in a different role, in whatever's going on. But we can find ourselves again as we work towards that as we spend time with ourselves, get to know ourselves, journal, meditate, reflect, 
those are the ways that we find our identity. And my book, Let Yourself Bloom, is how to do that. Our identity can't always be articulated, but there are certain ways that we can do that very thing. We can define our core values. We can name our strengths. We can figure out our purpose, why we're on this earth at this particular time, who we're meant to influence, who we're meant to learn from. All of those things make up our identity. Thank you for joining me in this prologue. I hope that you've heard it with new ears and that it's okay if you hear something repeated over and over again. We have to hear things over and over before they really become a part of us. Children have to learn and be exposed to so many words before they even attempt to repeat them themselves. Take a moment to reflect where you are right now, in this very moment. Is there something that feels like it's been on your mind or on repeat? Maybe you haven't fully taken it to heart. Ask, what is it inviting me to learn or shift in me today? This is just the beginning. Each chapter, each episode will explore both my story and your story together by layer. Whether you've heard it before or you're hearing it for the first time, trust that there's something here for you. And I can't wait to discover it with you. So let's start by listening to a little bit of the prologue and see what new insights await. Nobody told me I could choose to be anything other than a mother. I carried around the expectation in my heart that the peak of my life would be motherhood. When I was 11 years old, the first job I took on in society was babysitting. Later, I was enrolled in the required family science and consumer science classes at school and prepared to prepare to be a domestic goddess. I had countless religious lessons on the importance of the highest calling of mother. Mother figures were everywhere I went, and I had a front row seat to the highlight reel of motherhood. Mothers bonding effortlessly with their babies through nursing, sticky smiles after cooking with mom in the kitchen, cozy cuddles and reading on the couch with mom, happy families on outings together, colorful drawings displayed on fridges and walls, lots of laughter, celebration of firsts, and the joy of always having little buddies around. I was conditioned to want to be a mother, and the conditioning worked. As soon as I was engaged to be married, the conversations about the timing of parenthood began. We decided to give ourselves two years to be a couple before trying to get pregnant. After those first two years, it took nearly one year to get pregnant with my oldest child. It was time to have a baby. Now, where was it? I was filled with longing. I had no idea while I was experiencing this that it would only take a year to get pregnant. To me, it felt like it was going to be my entire life. A life I had no idea what to do with because children were my end goal. I tried to talk myself out of the hurt. People struggle for years, decades, a lifetime with infertility, and you can't even handle a few months? I had to avoid social media because I couldn't stand seeing posts about stroller recommendations, playdates at the park, or gender reveals. The following quote really resonated for me and validated my suffering. There will always be someone who has an objectively harder life. There will always be someone suffering in ways you've never had to think about. This doesn't mean you aren't allowed to grieve your circumstances. No one says you don't deserve to feel joy or gratitude because there are people who have it better than you. Similarly, it doesn't make sense to discount your struggles just because things could be worse off. That's by Danielle Kopka. I was raised to think that my circumstances weren't bad enough to justify complaints. When I would bring up headaches or heartaches, I was often given examples of pioneers or people with incurable diseases to compare to my own experience. There has since been a strong movement of people learning how to feel their emotions as well as engage in gentle parenting or reparenting. Yes, people have had it worse, but that doesn't negate our own suffering. It took a long time for pregnancy to truly sink in. 
I was in denial that after waiting and praying for so long, this desirable expectation was really coming to fruition. I had a very easy nine months of pregnancy and a very long labor and delivery. 34 hours that resulted in a C-section. When I was single, everyone wanted to know when I was getting married. After I got married, everyone wanted to know when I was having children. Once I had a child, everyone wanted to know when I was going to have another. And in retrospect, I'm grateful for the time it took to get pregnant because it caused me to examine myself. Who was I going to show up as, whether I had children or not? Our growth does not end when we become mothers. It continues. Of course, we grow within motherhood, but we don't need to discount or ignore the growth in other areas of our identity as well. We are so conditioned to want children. For some, it is religious. For others, it is cultural. I hopped on the bandwagon because it seemed like the natural next step. But what about the process of becoming a mother? How do we assimilate this new identity into the person we are? Do you feel like motherhood just happened to you? Did you choose to become a mom? Nobody comes up and asks, have you decided whether you're going to be a mom or not? No, no. They ask, when? When are you going to have children? When are you going to have more? Just because there's a door doesn't mean we have to open it. But if you do, own the choice to walk through it. Choose your heart. Choose to have children and then choose again to keep them. I'm embarrassed to tell you this, but in the early stages of motherhood, I didn't love my life. I struggled with the process of matrescence, transitioning into motherhood. Leading up to motherhood, I was accustomed to being highly productive, ambitious, and I often based my worth on my achievements. Now suddenly, I had a child taking all of my time and energy. My days looked much different than they used to, and I felt my worth and identity start to slip away. I let myself be consumed with motherhood and leaned into this new role. This new role involved having sore nipples, being pooped on, and experiencing postpartum depression. Because of the highlight reel I'd associated with motherhood, I wasn't prepared for the effort shock or the -the around-the-clock care. An infant needing me constantly, the loneliness and isolation, all the crying from myself and the baby, and the high demand of new expectations placed upon me as a mother. I experienced expectation pain as I reconciled the life I thought I would have and the life I was currently living. Three years into mothering, I heard a mom on a podcast say, I love my children, but I don't love motherhood. Wait, what? Can we say that out loud? This mom was speaking her mind, owning the truth that motherhood isn't always a thing to cherish, desire, and behold. I had put all of my eggs into the basket of motherhood and thought I was stuck with the basket. This statement provided me new hope new possibilities, new permission to love other things besides motherhood. Why does this feel embarrassing? Why is it unconventional to state these things? Why is it not okay to say that motherhood is not what we wanted? The guidebook to motherhood was handed down from my ancestors, and it did not make sense to me. It's as if it was filled with unfamiliar formulas or written in a different language. From the beginning of time, people lived in groups to have a better chance at survival. Women weren't as emotionally concerned about their identity because they were concerned about food, shelter, and protection from enemies. In a smaller social group, women would fall more naturally into the identities that best showcased their talents and benefited their communities. In an ever-growing urban atmosphere and with an increase in relationships abroad and online, women are more isolated in their motherhood duties and individual identities than ever before. Have you ever found yourself having any of these thoughts? I don't want to do just this every day. I don't want to only be a mom. I just want to be a working mom. My husband makes enough money to support us, but I want to work outside of the home. Who am, I be- who am I beyond motherhood? This book is for women who are ready to reclaim their identity. It's for the women who don't always fit the mom stereotype. The ones who aren't happily painting every day alongside their child. The ones who don't feel connected to themselves. The ones who are envious of people who are pu- pursuing their own interests. 
the ones who want to enjoy motherhood but don't fit the mold. This is for you because it's my story of matrescence and adjusting to a new normal of life in the fifth trimester. And there were no books for me to read about these feelings of being stuck in motherhood. Motherhood is akin to flowers blooming in a garden. They don't just appear one day. There's an actual process for how they germinate to how they blossom. Similarly, we don't just show up with our potential fulfilled. We have to bloom. This book is here to help you bloom. Before you set out to plant a garden, there is plan a planning and preparation phase. You have to decide what you're planting and when. In a cut flower garden, the goal is to harvest bouquets. We're going to compare ourselves to flower bouquets composed of many identity flowers, sown seeds that have been intentionally cultivated to maturity. This planning and preparation can take place before you even step foot in your garden. Some gardeners enjoy sketching out a vision of their garden on paper prior to set footing, setting foot on the soil. When I was pregnant with my oldest child, motherhood suddenly became especially relevant. What I saw and heard women talk about was how they'd lost their identity during motherhood. Once their children grew or left the house, they no longer knew what to do with themselves. They hadn't been as active in pursuing their own personal hobbies and interests as they had helping their children pursue their dreams and talents. Motherhood was practically their only identity flower. I carried this awareness into my journey as a mother. I started with a deliberate intention to cultivate all aspects of my identity while also nurturing my children in my role of motherhood. This perspective shapes how I approach mothering. You might be late in the growing season, and that's okay. Be intentional as you finish out this period of your life. Then, make a plan to bloom next growing season. How do you know when that is? It depends on which seeds you sow. Consider which ones will grow best in your current environment. I'm inviting you to trust me in this growing process. Take the ideas that resonate and plant them. Leave the rest. If you are a mother, motherhood will become just one of the many flowers in your bouquet, a part of your diverse identity. Throughout this book, you'll discover how to choose your seeds, nurture your flowers, and then maintain their vitality while also fostering the growth of other goal goals. You'll learn to recognize when adjustments are needed, understand the importance of challenging periods, and embrace opportunities for new growth. As the curator of your life, You'll support your own growth, empowered, liberated, and knowing you deserve to be nurtured and loved. I'm going to repeat that sentence. You deserve to be nurtured and loved. There's a lot of symbolism I will walk you through in this book. Section one focuses on allowing growth. You will learn how to plant and nurture the seeds in your garden. Before you can plant your seeds, however, you'll need to test your soil this will ensure that the ground is conducive to growth. You will also learn about the importance of consistent watering and how to curate your garden to your preferences. If you're aware of areas that may be deficient and you make changes to correct that, you will be more likely to succeed in growing a full, sensational bouquet. Section two hones in on the specific considerations within your unique garden. You will learn how to balance the demands of life while also pursuing your own passions. Eradicating weeds will make for a more spacious garden. You will also discover the importance of wintering experiences as they relate to seed germination. Lastly, in section three, you will learn how to completely unfold and bloom. In your highest power, encompassed in a community of support, you will put all of your cut flowers into a bouquet to admire. Continually maintaining your garden will ensure a constant rotation of bouquets over time. And that is the prologue. I will soon have it available for audiobook, <laughs> if that's your preference. And if not, you can order a hard copy on Amazon. I will continue reading each chapter in the episodes, unless they are too long that I might just read an excerpt. But I... I'm so glad you're here listening to how you can let yourself bloom and nurture your dreams.
Have a good week and I will talk to you soon. Thank you for joining us on Let Yourself Bloom, where we embrace the beauty of balancing motherhood and ambition. I hope today's episode has inspired you to nurture your dreams while being the incredible mom that you are. Remember, it's not just about finding balance. It's about thriving in all aspects of your life. If you enjoyed today's conversation, be sure to subscribe, leave a review, and share this podcast with other amazing women. And if you're the kind of person who loves to watch podcasts, you can find this podcast on my YouTube channel at Let Yourself Bloom underscore with Jen Banks or on the Ride the Wave Media Podcast Network YouTube channel. Remember to stay connected with us on social media at Let Yourself Bloom underscore with Jen Banks and join our community to keep blooming together. Until next time, keep dreaming, keep growing, and let yourself bloom.